All right, so I just arrived here in San Diego for Dr. Joe Dispenza's week-long advanced retreat. I'm super, super excited. My goal is to give you guys a recap every single day that I'm here, kind of what we covered, what that experience was like, if I saw anything crazy or wild, if I saw any interdimensional beings manifesting in this conference room. So I'm pretty excited uh, about this. San Diego looks freaking beautiful, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty pumped. Let's go. All right, so we just finished day one. Um, I'm back at my hotel now, and yeah, day one went good. I am pretty pumped and pretty motivated and pretty excited. I actually wasn't expecting that much content like that on day one. We probably had a good, uh, it wasn't much. It was like a three, four hour session with Dr. Joe. Um, so this is day one, and so it started off really late in the evening. Um, so like this morning, 6 a.m., my flight left from Maryland to New York City, and then from New York City to San Diego. Uh, so I was traveling all day long. Then they had registration was open from like 10 a.m. to like 4 p.m., something like that. Um, so I, I landed here around noon. I went and registered, got my, I had a little badge. I got a little bracelet. Uh, when you first register, they have like, I think it's probably like eight different teams, each of them a different color of the chakras. And they ask you to choose which one you want to join. You can join any of them. Um, or they can recommend one to you. Uh, and the lady was like, hey, why don't you join the yellow one? I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And so I joined the yellow team. And I think the purpose of the team is that it, it just kind of puts people into smaller groups. And I say small, but we're still talking like probably like 50, 60 people. And then there's like a team leader there. They're not really not that involved, but I guess they're supposed to be kind of your first point of contact if you have any concerns or anything. And you're supposed to stay in these kind of pretty large group. So I guess that way, you know, you're kind of more likely to get familiar with the people in that group, maybe make a few friendships and relationships there. Um, and so we registered, I registered, I got my bracelet, and then the uh, the actual main event started at 5.30 p.m. Uh, tonight and go in there. And yeah, it's hundreds of people in this room. You know, they're playing music, there's people dancing and everything. You know, everybody's real upbeat and, you know, happy, having a good time. Uh, and Dr. Joe comes on. And yeah, so like the first like good while, it was a lot of, I'll be honest, it's a lot of stuff that I've heard him say before, but I, that's okay. You know, some concepts you need to hear them over and over and over again before they really stick in your mind. You know, if he says something like to change a pers your personal reality, you need to change a personality. You hear that one time, you're like, oh, okay, what does that mean? But you hear that over and over and over again, it, and it it helps reinforce that concept and really helps kind of drive that concept home. And for whatever reason, kind of like seeing him and seeing him saying it in person, I think it it kind of drives those concepts home a little bit deeper. And so this first day is really just kind of overviewing a lot of the same stuff that he's talking about, um, about the potential and about our, you know, our energy and that we are all, you know, energy fields and that our bodies are the illusion, and this is just, you know, all like a big VR headset. This is the illusion. Um, and I, I took down a bunch of good quotes as well in my notes. Um, but yeah, he, he kind of went on like that for a while. And then he really started focusing on chakras uh, today and your energy centers um, today and kind of talking about it. We He had us practice the breath several times where you contract your lower muscles and your abdominal and your, your chest and you try to push all your focus and all your energy up into your uh, pineal gland and kind of push and you contract your muscles. And you know, when you're doing this, you're supposed to be pushing that cerebral spinal fluid up your spine. It's supposed to put pressure on your, your pineal gland. You're supposed to somehow activate the, the crystals that are on your pineal gland. And so we practiced that breath for a good while. He made it sound like that's a pretty important um, aspect of it. And then we did do a little bit of meditation. We Total, we probably did about an hour's worth of meditation this first day. Kind of spread out in a couple of different different ones. Is They're all pretty light for the most part. We do like a, a five minute meditation here and then like a 15 minute meditation here. And it's all really focused on the chakras um, or the energy centers. And you know, he did this exercise that I actually really enjoyed where he's like, okay, close your eyes. I'm just gonna name off the number of the energy center. I want you to fully focus and 
uh, experience and be aware of that energy center and be like, okay, one, one, be aware of nothing but one, and then two, two. And um, I, I, I got pretty deep into that, man. I don't, I'm kind of surprised how quickly and how deep I was able to set into that meditation of just kind of closing my eyes and being aware of nothing but you know, whatever energy center he's telling me to focus on. And I was like able to do that. It's just, you know, pitch black, just nothingness, except for, you know, just this, this ball of energy here and then here and then here, 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 and then your, your root. And I was actually kind of really surprised how deep I was able to get to that. We did that maybe two or three times. Um, I remember I was doing one of them and like, yeah, it, it I was able to sink so deep into it and really be aware of nothing but just that one energy center and then the next one, the next one, and the next one. And what he talks about is like, they're always there. They're always there. It's just that our awareness is never on them. And to kind of drive that home, like he was, you know, you're aware of each of these different ones. And then he's like, okay, now I want you to become aware of your entire body. And I was like, holy shit, my body's there. I, didn't, I totally lost track of it. And like, there it was, there's my body that I totally lost track of. It's just my awareness was not on it. And that's kind of a, a kind of a, a profound realization there that those energy centers are always there. You could be aware of them right now. You know, it, it's kind of like your nose, you're, you, you, you're always looking at your nose, right? Your nose is always in the field of view of your eyes but like you're just not aware of it. You see it so often, you're just not aware of your nose. But if you pay attention right now, your nose is always, anywhere you look, you're, you can see your nose. Uh, so it's kind of like that. You're just not aware of your nose. But once you become aware of your nose, that you're always looking at it, um, then you can't stop seeing it, you know? And so I think it's something along those lines that you just have to develop that awareness with it. And the more familiar you become with these energy centers, the more you can sense them and be aware of them in waking life. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I really like that that exercise. And so we're, we're focusing on the different energy centers and then to kind of come out of it is become aware of your body. It's like, oh, cow, that body was here the whole time. I totally lost track of it. And I remember opening up my eyes and I was like, holy cow, like I, I, I was so, so out of it um, that I, I completely lost awareness of the entire room and everything, uh, you know, in there. So yeah, day one was pretty good. I'm pretty excited. Um, you know, I did try to pay attention and see if I can like sense the energy in the room. I'm not really like that in tune with like sensing energies, but I, a moment there I was kind of looking around like, okay, man, can I, can I feel from my heart or can I feel everybody else's energy? There's some, you know, pretty advanced people in this room. I couldn't really pick up on anything, but that, that's, that may be more of me not being developing the familiarity or that awareness of uh, other people's energy like that. But uh, so tomorrow is, in most of these days, are going to start at 6 a.m., which is pretty pretty uh, intense, and I'm all for it. I'm from East Coast, so my time zones are all screwed up anyway. Why not wake up at, you know, 5 o'clock to get here? Um, and then one of the days is going to start at 4 a.m., and, you know, she's saying that... Uh, if you're gonna make dinner reservations for tomorrow, you probably shouldn't make them until after about 8.30 p.m. You can kind of imply that we're gonna have like a 12 hour day tomorrow, uh, but I'm all for it. You know, I spent almost five grand coming out here. Uh, $2,000, I think on the tickets, $2,500 in the hotel, another $1,000 on the airplane, plus all the food and everything I'm gonna be eating, uh, you know, five, $6,000 I'm spending on this trip. Like, yeah, I'm all for it. Give me, give me 12 hour days. I can, uh, let's, let's push, push ourselves. Um, and he, he's also talked a lot about how some of these days are going to be involving the walking meditation, kind of how important those walking meditations are. And I, I kind of hate to admit this. I've never done a walking meditation. I, I probably should have before I came here. Um, but I, I just haven't gotten around to trying those out yet. Even though I've been doing this for almost a year, like there's still so much stuff I haven't really kind of dove into. But yes, day one was good i am pumped i am excited i am motivated uh yeah man i think this is gonna be a, a pretty wild pretty wild week all right 5 30 a.m heading to 
second day of Dr. Joe Dispenza uh, workshop. We have to be there in our seats by six o'clock. Super, super excited. Today's gonna be a long freaking day. We're talking like 10, 12 hour days. They do give us breaks. They give us breakfast breaks, lunch breaks, other like 30 minute breaks kind of throughout just to kind of kind of break it up a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'm super excited about today. I think today is like when we're really gonna start going deep. We're gonna be doing a lot of meditations today. Uh, super, super excited. Check it out, can you see it? That's the moon, and then these two here are planets. Uh, I don't know which planets, but when you see anything like this where you don't see any stars, but all you see is a couple dots like that, that means that those are planets, probably Jupiter and Saturn, two biggest gas planets that we have. But yeah, super excited for today, and I'll give you guys an update later on. All right, just finishing up day two. What a long day, but man, I got a lot of value out of it. 14 hour long day, straight up. It started at 6 a.m. It's 8 p.m. now. Uh, we're just now finishing up the day. Uh, and there's still an optional Q&A going on and I, I just wanna duck out of it. I'm pretty pretty beat, pretty tired. Uh, but yeah, I got a lot of value out of today. So today, so it's 14 hours, but within that you also get a break for breakfast and they actually have a banging breakfast completely free. And they have a, a break for lunch, which is also pretty epic. Um, and then I think there's like two or three or four other like smaller, like 30 minute breaks throughout the day. So it's 14 hours total, but it is kind of broken up. Um, and the breakfast was really good. And so there's 1500 people here at this event today. Um, it's pretty wild seeing 1500 people all getting breakfast at these massive buffets. Um, but it, it, it all worked out, right? They have multiple different stations and everything. So it, it was pretty nice. And you know, when, every time I go and eat a meal, like it's a new table and new people, the conversation's always really popping. Um, one thing I've, I've noticed with this is like, everybody here is super, super friendly. Like, of course they are, right? This is like some of the friendliest crowd that you can find. Uh, so like, yeah, every time we sit down for a new meal, people are chattering and talking. Um, every day I sit down, you know, a new place and person on the left of me is talking to me, person on the right is talking to me, right? And, you know, Dr. Joe is kind of encouraging that. He says, turn to a person to your side, left to you and repeat what I just said or explain to him what I just said. So it's definitely something I picked up on that. It's, it's, you know, I go to some of these conferences and it's always like a little awkward kind of talking to people a little bit. Here, like everybody's super friendly, super talkative. You know, I got two hugs today. You know, it's just, it's that type of crowd. Um, and so today we really talked about the energy centers. Uh, and that was kind of the biggest focus. Actually, it sounds like that's the focus uh, tomorrow as well. So we're really focused on the energy centers and then specifically the breath and just how important that breath work is. Um, and that that really, you know, like here, here's the truth. I, I've been doing this work for almost a year. I've read multiple, most of his books taking all his online classes, I still didn't believe in the chakras and the energy centers. You know, I, I've been kind of like, all right, this seems plausible and this seems plausible and I've experimented and like, I'm very confident in these aspects and this aspect and this is very interesting, but the energy centers I was always very dismissive of and never really gave them much merit. And I think that's been a big mistake. Um, and after today, I, after today, I do believe in the energy centers. I absolutely do believe in them. Um, wh one, just with the conviction of which Dr. Joe talks about them, you know, that that's a big part of it. And then just talking to everybody else, just talking to networking people and asking them questions and talking to them about this stuff. Um, and then he even had some people go up on stage and kind of demonstrate themselves doing the breath, right? And the breath is you're contracting your perineum and your lower abs, your upper abs, you're putting your chest down and kind of contracting your chest a little bit and stretching out your neck and you're trying to force all this energy up into your uh, pineal gland. And you're supposed to be kind of envisioning the energy leaving these lower chakras and going up. And there's, by contracting, you're also pushing that cerebral spinal fluid up your spine as well, which supposedly puts pressure on your pineal gland. And I, you know, we, we've all kind of done those in the meditations and most of us kind of hate them. And it's like, oh my God, come on, is this thing over yet? But we, we did that a lot today. That was a big part of this, um, kind of going over that. And it seems like that's actually a pretty important component to his teachings. 
and really the energy centers in total are pretty important. Um, and I think that, you know, me dismissing them this whole time has really been a mistake and it's probably really kind of hampered or dampered my, my progress uh, with all of this. You know, uh, and, and like there, there's a couple exercises where I'll have you just like, all right, I want you just to feel one, one. You're supposed to focus on the first energy center, then two, then three, then four, then five, six, seven, eight. And when I, I'm doing this, I can actually sense them. You know, like I've never really done that exercise before, but I, I can sense them. I can close my eyes and lose awareness of everything except for I, I can feel like an energy in my chest or in my throat or pituitary gland or pineal gland. I can I, I can actually sense them and they're weak. Like I'm not really sensing a strong energy, but it's it's there. And I feel like if I so here, here's why I think it's been a mistake that I've been dismissing them. You know, he's talking about, and I've seen him do this diagram before, and I never really made much of a connection with it. Uh, okay, so first, I had a conversation with somebody today, and I was talking to him about how, you know, I want to help heal my son, and I've been doing the um, the tuning into new potentials, and I want to learn how to do the coherence healing so I can help help heal my son. And they, they told me, they're like, don't do any of that stuff yet. Don't do that. What you need to do is blessing of the energy centers and once your energy field is so large and so huge and radiating just by osmosis just by being in proximity to your son that is going to heal your son and I was like wow that's, that's really interesting I never really thought about that I've actually been dismissing that meditation and so they, they mentioned that and then Dr. Joe also hit on that exact same point a little later on in the day which I thought was really interesting and he's saying how we you have like source which is like a super high frequency right high, really high rate of frequency and then you have these uh like another layer which is a little bit slower and then another layer a little bit slower a little bit slower a little bit slower until you get to the world of the physical matter where it's super slow frequencies and he's saying that there's eight different levels of these frequencies correlating with your eight different chakras um and that if you're operating in the world of the three-dimensional matter, right? You're operating this lowest frequency range and you're trying to manifest changes in your life, it's gonna take a long time. It's gonna be a struggle to manifest anything if you're in this lower frequency range. And as you tune in to these higher frequency ranges, right? If you can get into this really high frequency range, like it's much easier for you to manifest changes in your life. and you can get to the point where he tells a lot of stories that people who are tuning into this highest frequency range, they have an intention and it literally manifests that day. And I'm talking about people wanting to manifest $2 million. And he, he's saying, yeah, this guy, he, that, he set that intention. That day he received $2 million, right? Dr. Joe was telling that, that story. And I, I was just, he, was, he, he was first telling that story and I was like, man, I've tried to manifest money. I've tried and I've, I've never, it's never come to fruition. So I've tried, but I've also been dismissing chakras altogether and tapping into the source energy. I've been dismissing that altogether. And I think that's the, the pitfall. I think that's the mistake that I've been making, that I'm still operating in these lower frequency ranges and I'm trying to manifest changes in my life and really I need to focus on getting into these higher frequency ranges and once you're in there those manifestations just start popping they just start emerging and start seeing those synchronicities and I thought that was really interesting um because I've been a little frustrated you know I have been doing this work on and off for almost a year now and I have tried to manifest several things you know and I've been unsuccessful at all but I think I've talked about that in my videos how you know, my life circumstance, I've noticed tremendous, tremendous benefits. And I've talked about that in other videos, all the benefits, but manifesting changes in my life have not been one of them. And I, I can't, you know, help make the connection that I've also completely been dismissing the energy centers and the chakras and all that stuff. And that may be why, you know, so really, really profound, um, in, insight like that alone is kind of worth it you know it, if it kind of comes to fruition if I kind of far, start focusing on those and so I think for the time being moving forward I'm going to be focusing on the blessing of the energy centers um, after today and I think tomorrow is all about the chakras and energy centers um, as well so I'm pretty excited one more quick story um, about a crazy synchronicity so 
I, 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 in my journal, I try to write down synchronicities every time I see them. And so uh, we, we, we were there, we went to lunch break, and you know, most people put like a bag or something down on their chair just so they can come back to the exact same seat, kind of know where it is. And I, I didn't do that. Uh, and I come back and there's this group of old ladies that have taken over like these three chairs, including my chair. And be like, well, crap, what the hell? What, what happened here? Um, I, I didn't make a big stink about it. I was like, okay, well, I, I don't care. I'll just find another open seat. And so I went down and I, and I found another open seat uh, and I sat down in there and I started talking to the girls next to me and like I hit it off with them pretty well. And so when I was at my lunch, I was talking to this old guy that um, we did one, of, we did like a, like a two hour long meditation in the morning. And he's telling me how, you know, when he was focusing on the lower uh, root chakra, your, um, your, your number one chakra, he's doing that and he got this flash of this World War II airplane flying directly at him. And this guy was telling me the story and he's sitting at the lunch table and I'm like, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, and so then after lunch, I went and I got this new seat next to these new people and I started talking to this girl and somehow it came up that she's like, yeah, and you know, I was, I was in line at lunch and I was talking to this old, old guy and he's telling me about the story about how he was doing uh, the meditation. He saw this flash of this airplane coming at him. I was like, holy cow, I, I sat next to that exact same guy at lunch. And like it, we weren't like in the same group or anything. Uh, there, there's literally 1,500 people at this event. So what, like, what are the chances that out of 1,500 people, I hear the story from this one guy, and then she also hears a story from this one guy, and then we end up sitting next to us each other, and then she starts telling me the story that she heard from this one guy just like an hour earlier. I was like, what, what, what are the chances of that? It's just so crazy. Um, and I was kind of blown away. I was like, I talked to that guy. He probably only told that story to maybe a dozen people, maybe, maybe at most, you know? Um, anyway, really kind of interesting. I, I put that down in my journal as another synchronicity um, that I noticed. But yeah, day two, I am absolutely exhausted. We probably did four or five hours worth of meditation today. Um, and so let me talk about those as well. So the, uh, the first one, um, you're sitting down for about half of it and then you lay down for the other half of it. And the first one, like, man, I am not used to sitting down for that long. I, I was in deep in this meditation. I was like, oh God, my back is hurting me. My neck is hurting me. It totally took me out of this meditation. I, I couldn't get, get into it. Um, at lunch, I took some ibuprofen, but then luckily the second time, we pretty much did the same meditation in the afternoon. And this time, uh, you know, one of my friends was giving me crap. They're, friends that somebody I just met they're giving me crap jokingly um, about how like oh come on you can't push through that pain um, and like I can push through like an itch if I'm meditating and I got an itch I can ignore that itch and make it go away um, and so the second round of this meditation I am still feeling all these aches and pains I'm actually feeling them right now but I really focus on pushing through that and just taking my awareness off of my brain or off of my body and putting it on, being nobody, nowhere, no time, and fully taking my awareness off of this aches and pains that I was having, and was I able to do it. I was super happy that I was actually able to pull that off on the second round of these meditations, and I was able to fully um, get into that meditation and really stick with it for a good two hours, uh, even though I had all these aches and pains going on. As soon as the meditation stopped, I kind of came back to my body. I was like, oh, God, oh, man. So yeah, uh, day two is super good. I'm super excited. I am super tired. I'm gonna grab some food. I'm gonna go and call it an early night. Um, yeah, I'm excited. See you guys on day three. All right, just finished day three, another long day. Um, a little bit shorter, instead of eight o'clock, we got out at 7.30 today. Uh, another awesome day, absolutely packed, full of all kinds of great information. We did three different meditations today, each of them probably between like an hour and a half, two hours long. Pretty intense, but I tell you, man, by the time I got to that third meditation, that was the deepest one I've gone to yet. Um, like every time, like he really, really pushes you with these meditations to go longer, go deeper, um, and it kind of sucks, but it's working. I, this is, it's, it's working. I, I like that he's pushing us like this out of our comfort zones. You know, too often, 
you know, we sit down and go, I'm going to do a meditation. You get 15 minutes into it. Ah, I give up. I'm going to go watch some TV. Like, you, you can't do that here. That You really get pushed. Um, and today, we talked about a lot of really interesting stuff today that I thought was really, really helpful. Um, a lot of it was, you know, just about how to manifest things in your life, how to heal other people. We kind of dabbled into that. And was, you know, it's kind of talking about other dimensions here as well. And he's saying that when you're no one, nowhere, no time, no body, you're pure consciousness. And that is in the fourth dimension. That, that pure consciousness is not in our three-dimensional world. When you are nobody, nowhere, no time, no space, you are in the fourth dimension. Um, and we focus on a lot on that, being nobody, nowhere, nowhere, no time, no thing, nobody, no one. That was kind of a big part of today. And saying when you when you get there, so that that is, he calls that the door, right? And he says says how he can take you to the door, but you have to walk through that door. He can just tell you what to do, but that is the hardest part, I think, is becoming nobody, nowhere, no time, no space, nothing. You know, um, I was even struggling with that today, and I could get to a point in these meditations where I would have no thought and I would see no image and I'd be nowhere, no time, but I'd still have a body. That that was the hardest part, hardest thing to let go, right? I can let go of the three-dimensional world and let go of the chatter of my mind, not visualize anything, visualize nothing, but I'm still aware of my body. I had a really, really hard time letting go of that so that I can truly be nobody, nowhere, no time, and no space. And I think that is an important skill to be that nobody, nowhere, no time, no space. Um, and so by the third meditation, I was all throughout the day, I was kind of experimenting with different techniques while I'm inside of here, trying to be nobody. I was trying to chant, you know, nothing, 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 trying mantras like that in order to get, get rid of that, get my consciousness to separate from my body. Um, at one point I was trying to just visualize my body all fading to black. Um, and I, at another point I was trying to visualize myself, my consciousness moving forward through the nothingness and hopefully leaving my body behind. And it wasn't until this third meditation today that I, I kind of figured out a technique that worked for me. And it's a common technique that you see in these meditations where I visualize my body sitting there meditating and I visualize my consciousness is floating above it and further and further and further and further and further away. And so my body is just a little blip and then it just fades to black. And once I did that, then I was able to sink into this nobody, nowhere, no time, no space, much, much deeper. Um, that was really profound that I figured out a technique that worked for me to really get into this space of being nobody, nowhere, no time. And that's really what we focused on a lot today is being that space. And, you know, he, he reaffirmed that you enter into the space that is the fourth dimension. And from there, you can enter into the fifth dimension, which is essentially you are, you go from being nobody to everybody in every time, in every space, in everywhere, in everything. You have to be nobody first, and then you become everybody. And in that space, he calls the fifth dimension, where you are, it's infinite infinites, right? It's the multiverse. It's every possibility that ever could possibly exist. And when you're in there, that is when you can start drawing and attracting these things to you. And yeah, I mean, I love hearing that, you know. Um, my... my my goal is to heal my son, right, from an incurable genetic disorder. Um, it, you know, and I, I definitely have a, a lot of moments where I'm like, is it really possible? Is it, like, really? Um, it, 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 yeah, I, I still don't know if it is or not. I, but what he's saying is anything is possible because it is an infinite, infinite number of possibilities. And, like, this is what I need to develop is how to become nobody, nowhere, no time, no space, be pure consciousness so that I can then enter into the fifth dimension of everybody, everywhere, every time, every space. You know, I've been doing this work for almost a year now. I haven't, I haven't gone that level. I haven't gone that deep into these, these meditations. And like, you can do like tuning into new potentials, but 
it, if you're doing it in this three-dimensional world, it's nowhere near as effective as if you're deep into this, you are pure consciousness, and then you do this. You know, that's really how you tune into it and how you can manifest things almost instantaneously. So today was a good day. I got a lot of knowledge and I got a lot of experience. And what's nice is like we had a breakfast break uh, and I got to sit around and talk to people at lunch, uh, at breakfast, and then we'll get a lunch break. About to meet up with somebody for some drinks right now. I'm um, probably going to talk a little bit more about this stuff. So it's nice masterminding and networking and talking to other people about this stuff, helping kind of unpack some of this information. Made a lot of a lot of great friends here. Um, like every day, it's like I'm talking to new people, and I'm not even that outgoing or, or social, but it kind of they encourage you to kind of talk and kind of unpack this information with everybody. So tomorrow morning we've got our first we got our, our walking meditation which I'm super excited about. I've never actually done one of those, but people say they're pretty profound. Uh, so yeah, I will check in tomorrow morning. All right, so day four, I just finished the walking meditation. We got a little bit of break. We gotta be back there by uh, 9 a.m. And I had two kind of weird things happen to me during this walking meditation I want to talk about. So first off, like that's my first time doing one of these walking meditations. I like it. I do like them. Um, essentially, you start off standing and then you get into this, try to focus on getting into heart brain coherence and connecting the two and feeling the energy in the two. Then you open up your eyes and you start walking while still trying to maintain that heart brain coherence. Um, and then you stop walking, you kind of goes, you get back deep into it and you open up your eyes or walking again, you're trying to keep this going, you're trying to focus on your future self and who you're going to be and drawing that person to you. And in the end, you stop and you actually lay down and there's a little, little bit where you lay down. And here's the two weird things. So it's like a, like an hour long meditation and I'm laying down and mine finally ends and I start waking up and I open up my eyes. I'm just sitting there just kind of staring up at this cloudy skies for maybe like five, 10 seconds. And then Dr. Joe walks right by me as I'm laying down, like, like two feet away from me, you know, right by my feet, just kind of walk casually walks by. And uh, like, it's not, not unusual for him to be out there walking around with the, what people are doing these meditations. That's not uncommon at all. It's just, what are the chances that as soon as my meditation ends and I open up my eyes, and there he is, Dr. Joe, right right in front of me, you know, arms re reach away. Uh, yeah, I thought it was really interesting. You know, just what, you know, what are the chances of, of that exact moment? Um, yeah, pretty cool. I mean, that, I, kind, I kind of chalked that up to one of these synchronicities, right? And then, so he walked by, I was like, oh, okay, cool, man. And then I kind of closed my eyes a little bit more. And I opened up my eyes again, I was just staring up at the sky. And I noticed I was seeing all these little dots of light, right? I've seen stars. So I knew, I, I've seen stars before, you hyperventilate or something. But this was different. It was thousands of them, tens of thousands. And it, it, like, it had depth, like some were further away, some were kind of close, some were really close. And it's these little like particles of light that would pop into existence and then like a second later fade away. But there's thousands of them reminded me of like mosquitoes, right? A big swarm of mosquitoes. But it's just all these little lights popping and doing existence and like fading away as I'm staring up at the, the sky. And I was able to, to, you know, instead of focusing on the sky, kind of focus much closer on these, this field of these little lights. And I was just like staring at them and they lasted for like over a minute. Uh, like in the end, I was like, okay, I gotta get up. Uh, and they're still there. These little particles of lights that are just merging and popping into existence and popping out of existence and they're everywhere it's all in my field of vision just these little different like layers of these little lights popping in it was the craziest thing i'm not really sure what that is um because like you know if you stand up too quickly like you'll see stars and it's kind of like that except like when i stand up quickly i feel like the stars are bigger and there's less of them and they do kind of like pop in existence and they pop out in the last couple of seconds this was, they're much, much smaller, and there's thousands, tens of thousands of them in my entire field of view, and I could focus on them, or I could focus, you know, on the clouds if I wanted to, and I could still kind of be aware of them, but I was really just looking at these layers. I'm just staring up the clouds, just looking at all these little stars. Crazy, weird thing. 
I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's energy. I, I, I don't know what that is, but that was pretty wild. Dr. Joe walking by just as I'm opening up my eyes and then I just start seeing all this little, these little stars kind of like all around it and you know, it's a good minute or so. But yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's a good start to day four. Uh, we're gonna, nine o'clock, we're gonna go back down there and really kind of start the day. Um, yeah, I'm excited. All right, so we just finished day four, and man, I am super, super happy with how today ended. We definitely ended on a high note. So this morning, we started off with the walking meditation I talked about already, and we kind of focused on doing that heart-brain coherence and kind of being in that coherence um, while you're being awake and walking around, being active. And like, I kind of could kind of feel it. I could kind of start activating it a little bit. It wasn't anything really profound. So then we get jump into the classes. We're talking a lot about... I don't even know, all kinds of stuff today. Um, and then we did a like an hour and a half, two hour long meditation where he was bringing up the kaleidoscope videos and we would stare at the kaleidoscope video for part of his meditation. And what happens is that your, your brainwave frequency range should drop down from like alpha to beta to theta. I, I always get the ranges confused, but you can literally just zonk out and totally zone out and silence the chatter in your mind and really drop down a lower frequency ranges just by staring into this nothingness of the kaleidoscope. So really cool, I, it sounds really cool, but it was like an hour and a half meditation and man, I just could not get into it at all. I just couldn't, I couldn't focus. And like, it would it'd be like staring at this for a little bit and then you'd go in, into a deeper meditation, kind of be nobody, nowhere, or focus on an intention that you want to manifest. I could not get into it, man. It was so, so long. And I remember I had to open up my eyes and come out of it and look around for a little while there. Could not get into it. I was super, super uncomfortable in my chair the entire time. And so that meditation we finally got through was like an hour and a half, two hours. And I was just exhausted from that. Um, and then, so then he started teaching a little bit more about this kaleidoscope and how what was really, really profound is that you know, if you get a uh, some water and you have multiple frequencies in there, you get these like interference patterns. You get all these waves and ripples in um, in the water, right? And those that's like a two dimensional representation of those frequencies. Um, another experiment is you can get a speaker and put a plate on top with sand on it, and you can get a two dimensional representation of those sound waves in that sand. And so the profound thing that he said was that the kaleidoscope is sort of, so, so okay, so those waves and those ripples in the water or in the sand, there's information in there. You can look at those ripples in the water and deduce what created them or what the pattern was. Same thing with the, the sand and the, the frequencies creating different patterns. You can look at a pattern and figure out what that frequency actually is. There's information in those representations, those two-dimensional representations of those frequencies. And so what the profound thing they were saying is that the kaleidoscope really represents information from source. And source is creating frequencies that turn into physical objects that are manifested. Source is what's creating the information of this hologram that we live in. And the kaleidoscope is sort of the best representation of what that information would look like. And it's just a constantly changing colors and patterns and shapes and lines and it's kind of three-dimensional so it looks like it's coming right at you and that's like really profound because when I do these meditations quite often I see patterns like that he, he was talking about this some people call it sacred geometry and I can see these patterns as well when my eyes are closed and it, it looks a lot like a kaleidoscope for me though it's never in color it's always black and white and shades of gray um, and so what he's saying is like he sees that as well and this is the raw information from source This is the frequencies and the energy that source is emitting that you can observe them And I mean I see it. I guess I'm not really seeing it with my eyes necessarily I don't know what I'm seeing it with and so the kaleidoscope really represents that and then he dropped this bomb on us that We are source we are the source and it's not necessarily that the kaleidoscope is emitting these frequencies, we are emitting those same frequencies. We are emitting that energy from our mind, just like the kaleidoscope. And so when I did this, so we did the meditation again, 
And I gotta be honest, man, I was really like discouraged. I actually thought about just skipping the meditation. I was like, ah, oh, that was so brutal last time. Really glad I didn't. Once I got that, that we are source, we are emitting a kaleidoscope of information from our minds constantly. Once I got that and I kind of visualized emitting all the stuff, like I really, really sunk really deep into this one. And this one, you know, we spent a little bit of time being nobody, nowhere, no nothing. I got really deep on doing that, being no, nobody, losing track of my body. I got really deep in that. And then we focus on the things that we want to manifest in life. And I really got into that heartbreak coherence, like the deepest I've ever been, man. Like I, I could feel like the energy like radiating from my mind, right? My brain sending the signal out. And then I could feel the emotions of it coming back. And it felt like uh, like the energy is going everywhere, but it felt like some of that energy would suck back into my heart. The heart sucking energy from everywhere, but it felt like there's just like this band is cycling, right? And it come into your heart and go up and out top of your head. And I could feel it like radiating in me. I could like feel the energy. It was the wildest thing. And I just had a huge grin on my face the entire time I was doing this thing. I was totally just in love and just feeling passionate. I was just so excited and so happy and I would visualize these different things I'm trying to manifest and I would also visualize like a kaleidoscope of information radiating from my mind and I could just like feel energy getting sucked back in with the, the, uh, the emotions and going back up. It was the wildest thing. And by the end of it, man, I just had a hell of a grin on my face and I could feel myself like like energized. Like I, I swear I could feel the energy. So I've never reached that that level of heart brain coherence uh, before. So that's why I'm so happy about today. Like it was pretty wild. Um, that, that totally made it, it, it all worth it. That was definitely a pretty epic, uh, pretty epic last meditation. Super happy. I stuck with it. You know, big thing about all of this is that he's really pushing us, pushing us a lot further than I usually go. If I was back home, I may have just skipped that meditation or I may have given up halfway through or something. So here, definitely getting pushed out of your comfort zone. Um, and like, I've kind of heard him talk about this kaleidoscope stuff before. I'd never really got it until until today. So I'm super happy. And like, I, like I, I'm a believer now that like we can create from source. We are source, we are, we are source. We are, and like we can emit those frequencies and that energy as well in order to manifest things or attract things or change things in our lives as well. So today was definitely, definitely a good day. Let me just give you a quick little panoramic view of the sunset. It's definitely very beautiful out here in San Diego. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so today was a good day. Today we learned how to do coherence healings, which is really like what I came here for. That's a big reason why I got into this whole Dr. Joe Dispenza work is trying to figure out how to learn how to heal my son or help him out as, as best I can. And uh, yeah, today it was not disappointing. It was pretty epic. We did coherence healings on people and it was freaking wild and crazy um, and yeah, man, I'm, I'm bursting with love right now. <laughs> so, okay, so they get uh, everybody in there who's doing the coherence healings and everybody's laying down on the ground. I think it's like 100 people, right? Out of the 1,500 people here, like 100 of them were getting healed. They're the healies. And so the other 1,400 of us are out there in kind of the hallway. We do kind of a quick little standing up meditation. And then they have us walking in and we're all completely silenced. We're kind of zonked out, we have our heart, hands over our hearts like this. And we're walking in and it's so surreal because you have like a hundred people all laying on the ground. Most of them are laying on blankets and they have blankets kind of tucking themselves in and they have eye masks on and nobody's moving, nobody's speaking. And it's like we're walking past these body bags, like just laying on the ground. It's the creepiest, weirdest thing. The lights are real dark, but they have a couple like red and purple lights going on. They have some mystical stuff on the screens, some crazy music and nobody's saying a word. And they lead us in there and they have uh, eight of us to a person and they sit us down and then they kind of dr joe starts speaking starts doing his thing kind of guides us through these um these different just different meditations really and we're supposed to be like channeling our love and kind of like 
pushing our love out, outwards. And I don't want, I don't want to get too many detail on, on how to do the coherence healing, but what, one of the things that really like was really profound, like I'm in there, I'm in the zone, I'm doing this, I'm feeling love, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody, nowhere, no time, just experiencing pure love in my, my heart chakra. And then he said, um, you know, for you to give love, you have to receive love as well. And he said that, and you know, he's instantly thought of my son, of me, you know, giving him my love. But he's saying, I also have to be able to receive love from my son as well. And as soon as I started thinking that, envisioning that, I'm like, oh man, it was this fucking <sighs> game over, man. Uh, I was just like, I wasn't weeping, but like just tears flowing down my throat up face. But I still had like a big smile on my face because I was still full of love. It's just like crying and it's like really intense in here. There's a bunch of everybody's crying. Um, everybody's trying to feel like pure love and trying to push that love outwards and into the, the Healy. Crazy, crazy, intense uh, experience, but I'm really happy I went through it. Um, I got really deep into that meditation. I don't know because if it was because everybody else is in the room, everybody else is doing it as well, or if it's the scene, but I got really deep into that. Um, just being, you know, experiencing being absolutely nobody except for this big ball of love in my chest and pushing that love, that energy out. Wild, crazy, uh, crazy experience. And I think we have two more days of doing these coherence healings, um, which I love. I mean, that's, that's, that's the skill set that I want to learn. And again, it really seems like this meditation and a lot of the other things comes down to you being able to be nobody, nowhere, no time, no space, no nothing, and really being able to be nothing. Um, and the truth is like a lot of times I don't get to that state, right? I, I, I can kind of poke my head into that state. I can be there for a moment, but then I come out. That is the skill that is really critical in all of this, to be your awareness of nothing but your awareness and be absolutely nothing. But so today was a good day. Tomorrow we are doing the pineal gland meditation at 4 a.m., which means I gotta go wake up here at like three o'clock, the shower and walk over to the hotel. Um, pretty intense, but you know, he's saying that, you know, your melatonin levels are highest at between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. He wants you to have those raw melatonins to, that your brain can work with that give you, you know, a crazy mystical experience. Uh, so I'm super, super excited about that as well. Uh, yeah, dude, today was a good day. All right, so today was absolutely packed full of content. Uh, a long day, but it went by quick and like we did a lot today. So started off the day by waking up at 3 a.m. to get down there by 4 a.m. Uh, for the um, pineal gland meditation starts at 4 a.m. It went for five hours, five hour long meditation. But man, it was intense and it went by quick. It's crazy. You know, the first day I got here, <coughs> I was kind of complaining that like, I couldn't stay in the meditations. Like my back would start hurting, my neck and my shoulders, and my butt was hurting from sitting for so long. But like, and I, so because of that, I was really nervous about this longer meditation that we all knew was coming. But I've gotten so much better at taking my mind out of my body and being, you know, nobody, nowhere, no time, kind of losing track of my body, um, that all these little aches and pains, like I'm not even focused on them. I'm, they're all back there and I'm off doing my own thing. Um, and it really helps out. So like, I, yeah, it wasn't an issue having all these little aches and pains. I just wasn't aware of them, which is pretty wild. And so yeah, five hour long meditation, couple sessions of laying down, getting up, sitting in the chair, laying back down, kind of did that a couple of times. And like even just five hours of being fully awake and alert, like you are right now, but wearing a blindfold so you cannot perceive anything in your three dimensional reality. Even that alone is a heck of an experience. But when you add in another layer to that, that you're more or less losing track of your body and you're silencing your mind and you're aware of nothing but these energy centers that you have, uh, that's pretty wild. Um, and mostly like 
I spent most of that five hours just focusing on, you know, your heart energy center and your, your third eye, um, your pineal gland energy center. And yeah, it was pretty wild. And like this meditation is really focused on you having like essentially like a psychedelic trip during this meditation and you kind of tapping into your pineal gland. And I didn't quite get there. I, 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 I was knocking on the door. I was poking my head through the door. I couldn't quite get there to that level, but I still had some pretty wild stuff. Um, I saw a lot of, so I had a, it's all dark in the room, plus I got my mask on. I saw a lot of lights fluttering before me, a lot of geometrical patterns and like my own kaleidoscope. And sometimes I'll see that kaleidoscope stuff and it's just kind of like, it's there for a moment and it fizzles away and it comes back and sometimes it's kind of blurry, it's more like blobs. Um, but this one is crisp, crystal clear right in front of my eyes, man. I was just watching all these lights kind of dancing before me. Um, and like, I, I could see, like, I saw some light that was like, zoom, like going past my field of vision and like going back the other way. And I had a mask on, like this was, this was all internal that I was triggering these, this light show and seeing these geometrical patterns and shapes and lights. It was pretty wild. I mean, that's, that's what this pineal gland meditation is really focused on is you seeing visions and you know, what he says is having a sensory experience without your senses. Um, so I didn't like... It, it, I didn't quite get as far as we're hoping to, like that, that the goal was, but I definitely made progress along the way. And I was definitely, it's a heck of an experience. Um, so that's how the day started. Then, then what, man? I, I can't even remember. Like <laughs> that's 4 a.m. That, that started. We did a bunch of core classes. Oh, we had some of the scientific research team come out, talk about the latest science going on and research and the evidence showing that this stuff is curing cancer, you know? And, um, it's pretty wild stuff. Uh, and then we did another, we finished up the day with another coherence healing session um, where we're healing the healies. And again, that was, that was pretty wild. Um, the, you know, by the end of it, you, like at one point you stick your hands out and like you're supposed to be aware of the space beyond the palms of your hands and feel the energy of the other people in your group. And like, I, man, I could feel something. I could feel the energy with my hands, like no joke. Um, and I remember by the end, he said, put your hands back together over your heart. And I, I noticed when I did that, I was like, oh man, my, both my hands are trembling. Like I didn't even realize that until I put them together and put them back over my heart. So crazy wild experience. It's about seven o'clock. We're just getting released for the day. But again, like, I mean, I could have, I could have sat there for another five hours. You know, it's just packed full of great content and experience and information today. So today was another good day. Um, if I'm doing my math right, I think that tomorrow, yeah, today's day six. Tomorrow is the final, final day. Um, we're doing another walking meditation. We're doing some other crazy stuff. Uh, a couple of breathing exercises. Super, super exciting. It's excited. Uh, and today, today was a good day. All right, day seven is in the books. Uh, another crazy and wild day. So let me give you a quick recap of today, and then I'll give you like a recap of the entire seven day thing. What what my thoughts are on it. So we start off today with uh, another crazy new meditation. Um, this thing must have been like a two hour long meditation, and it, it was just kind of a crazy thing. And it's all about you know your pineal gland again, and like unlocking that and like seeing visions. And a uh, long meditation, and like it was cool at first. Like I, I wasn't really seeing anything. I was seeing a lot of these, like you know, these geometrical patterns, a lot and shapes and colors. I've been seeing a lot of those the last couple of days. Almost every meditation, I'm constantly seeing just just patterns like this. Even with like my my eye shades on, really interesting. Almost every meditation now, I'm seeing this stuff, which is really cool. Um, and so we're doing this one, and this this another early meditation started at 5 a.m. And he has us laying down on the ground, but he doesn't want us to fall asleep. So it's this crazy breathing exercise he has us doing. Wait, wait, in your out, in your nose, out your mouth. Like we're essentially hyperventilating and then holding our breath and then letting go and focusing on one of our energy centers. And he says that you do that in order to keep you from falling asleep. And like it works. And so we're laying there for this longest time and kind of in this weird state of like dreaming, but awake and alert. It got really kind of crazy, um, and I didn't really have that many visions or anything or any dreams. 
but I had one. I had one crystal clear vision. I'm calling it a vision because it wasn't quite a dream, because I wasn't quite asleep. I was kind of asleep, but like I was still alert and awake, just with my eyes closed. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's somewhere in between being awake and, and sleeping. And I had this vision that I, I walked into a house, and it wasn't my house, and I saw my son there playing, and I kind of ran up behind him, started like chasing him, playing with him. Um, and I was kind of chasing him around the house, and he's giggling. And then he turns around, he gives me a hug, and he, he calls me Dada. Which is huge, because my son doesn't speak. He's seven, and he's nonverbal. Um, and, and he looked a little bit older. You know, he looked a year, two years older, which I thought, I, I noticed that, and I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, and so what, what's really interesting about that, because yesterday we had somebody came up on stage talking about how she has stage four cancer, had had stage four cancer, and it lighting up like a Christmas tree. It was everywhere, everywhere in her body, you know, um, not a good diagnosis at all. Um, and she's been dealing with it for a long time. She's doing the meditations for a long time, and it would kind of get better, then get worse again, then kind of get better, get worse again. And then she said she had did one meditation where she had a vision that she saw herself uh, as an old 90-year-old woman. She saw her, an old version of herself, and I think she talked to her in this vision that she had during meditation. She said when she came out of it, like, that was it. She knew that she was going to survive this and be grow to be an old woman. And that was, after that meditation, everything just got better. All her cancer is just all getting shrinking and getting smaller and fewer and fewer and that was a huge turning point with for her was this one deep meditation where she had this vision and so I just think it's so interesting that you know so she saw a, a version of her future self I saw a version of my future son which is just really interesting yeah really cool so that's kind of how we started the day uh, that's the first meditation that we did then we did another walking meditation you know those are kind of neat I, I got you know it's is I didn't go super deep in those, but it was interesting. Again, when I stopped that one, like the first one I was telling you about, um, when I opened up my eyes, I just see all these little stars. When I stare up at the sky, I see all these little light streaks. With my eyes open, I'm seeing this. And I could, I could focus on it, you know? I could focus on them and see these little, really clear, tiny little, like, millimeter streaks of light that would emerge and go by and then disappear. And it's like thousands of them. And it's like they had depth and like layers. And it's like a whole swarm of mosquitoes of these things. Like when I opened up my eyes from this this long meditation, this walking meditation, I just I sat there for like a minute just trying to look at them. And, and I was also, you know how you sometimes see floaters in your eyes? You know, you look at like the sky and you see these like little things that kind of move with your eyes. I was seeing those as well, which is really interesting because I saw those floaters the first time. I saw these little stars as well. I was seeing both the stars and these floaters is multiple floaters that I was seeing and like kind of following my eyes. And I talked to somebody the other day, they said they had the same experience with the floaters at least. She's like, yeah, it was like there's a microscope, like my eyeballs were microscopes looking at a Petri dish. I was just seeing all these little details in the sky when I was looking at it. I was like, oh, I, I had something like that too. I saw these little floaters and all this like little things like in that moved with my eyeballs. Weird, weird stuff, man. Just weird stuff happening with these meditations. And then we did, uh, we finished it up with, um, did a co another coherence healing session. So a third coherence healing session uh, on a lot of these, a lot of these people. Another really crazy, interesting meditation. Uh, you know, I'm doing it and like, I, I was getting chills down my body, like straight up chills running like all the way down my body. And at one point they were like, all right, now put your hands over your heart. And I realized like my hands were trembling like this as I'm doing this meditation. And there's people screaming and moaning and flailing around like, 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 <laughs> like no joke, man. There's people go going crazy like that. Um, and I mean, what, what Dr. Joe says is like, like he does that too sometimes. He's had those experiences where he goes, ah! and you know, he's flailing around. And what he says is just that you're tapping into so much energy. You're driving this energy into you from the field, from this unified field or the quantum field. You're, you're sucking this energy to you and it's going through your body and people just kind of convulse and they do things like that. I, dude, I was getting the chills. I was fucking like, ugh, getting the chills and I was, you know, shaking like this. Like it's, it's a real thing. Um, and some people it's, I mean, it's so interesting watching people 
just yeah they, they just watching them react to this energy and like all week long we've been seeing you'll be in a meditation and you hear people go ah! or some people go just burst out laughing that energy manifests and <laughs> like deep belly laughs like this in the middle of meditations and groans and everything it's crazy um and like i mean i don't judge i want to be one of those people i want to have that kind of experience you know uh, i i'll get there i think i will so yeah, really crazy. All three of these meditations, freaking bonkers, man. It's it's wild and it's so, so interesting. Um, all right, so the recap of the entire week. Like, what do I think? Um, yes, I am happy I came. I am very happy I came. I think this could literally be like a life-changing experience. I've gone deeper into these meditations than I ever have in my entire life. You know, uh, there's just something about it. Like, you can go at home and do your 45-minute, hour-long meditation home, you know, lying in your bed. It's nothing compared to doing these two-hour-long meditations in a room with 1,500 people, you know, who are also doing the meditations. And you're doing it two or three these meditations a day. So this is day seven. We've probably done over 30 hours of meditating in the last seven days. Like even today, we did probably like five hours of meditation just today. We did like a two hour long one and then like an hour long walking one and then the hour long coherence healing one. One of the days, maybe yesterday, I'm kind of losing track, we did a five hour long meditation and then we still did two other meditations that day. Like it's it's that crazy. Like that's what you, like you come here for the information, but you also come here for these meditations, like to really be pushed out of your comfort zone. And I mean, I, I gotta tell you, like, after doing a five hour long meditation and listening to people screaming and moaning and flailing around, uh, me going home and doing an hour long meditation in complete silence on my couch, piece of fucking cake, man. Not a problem. Uh, that's, that's, I want, I gotta push myself harder. That's too easy, you know? So that, that's definitely a big aspect of this is pushing us beyond our comfort zone. I mean, I know people are like, yeah, I can't do more, more than 20 minutes. Like, man, I did five hours of meditation. You can only do in 20 minutes. You know, it, you know they, they say that to be a master of any skill, you need to put in 10,000 hours, right? So if it's a piano or basketball or whatever it is, you just got to get to that 10,000 hour marker. And if you can do that in five years, six years, seven years, 10 years, you know, like, you, you'll be a master of it. It just kind of depends on how long it takes you to get to that 10,000 hours. And it's not really exactly 10,000 hours. It's just a helpful way of looking at these things. And I think that with meditation, it's a skill. It's a, it's a skill that you need to practice. And, I mean, we, we got a lot of practice in, the, you know, this week. And, like, I'm super excited to actually go home and keep doing this stuff. It, I, I've gone deeper into some of these meditations than I, I, I ever have. I've had some wild experiences with these meditations I've never had before. And those experiences are gonna stick with me for the rest of my life, man. Uh, I mean, even just that vision of me seeing my son, like that that's gonna, I, I, it's so crystal clear. Um, and it's so odd that like it was in my house and he looked a little bit older. Like that's still, like is that a future house of mine? I, I don't know, you know, it's just so interesting. But yeah, man, 100%. And a lot of the concepts, you read it in a book and you kind of read over it and you're like, okay, and you kind of move on to the next page. You, you kind of like, you could re recite it, but it's not, it's kind of like a superficial level. You don't really understand it. You don't really have conviction and believe in it. But now with this, you know, I, I, I kind of do. Like I, I understand a lot of these concepts on a much deeper level. And actually I believe in them now. What, one of the things that really struck me is like, Somebody could write a book and say, oh, you do this, this, and this, it'll cure your cancer. That's one thing, right? But you're kind of hiding behind the, you know, a pseudonym name or something or a book. You're not actually being confronted by people. But to get a group of people in a room and say, hey, you with stage four cancer, you do this, it will cure your stage four cancer. That takes balls. That takes conviction right there. It, that's and that's crazy. It, that's crazy conviction right there, man. Uh, and that's exactly what Dr. Joe was doing, you know? And not only that, he's having people come up on stage saying, I had stage four cancer. I did this. 
it cured it. He had doctors coming up on stage showing the research how meditation, these deep states of meditation, is curing stage four cancer in patients. Uh, so he has a testimonial, has a scientific research, and then he's, you know, people are going through this, these coherent healings. Um, it's a heck of an experience, man. It is a heck of an, uh, an experience. So yeah, I 100% am very happy I came to this thing. I probably dropped about five grand, probably over that. Um, uh, coming to this trip, it's $2,000 for the ticket, $1,000 for the flight out here from Maryland. I'm in San Diego. Uh, a little over two grand for the hotel um, as well. So yeah, it, but it was worth it. This is a heck of a thing. And I, I gotta say like, I've never had more conviction in believing that I could help my son out than I do right now. It, none of the testimonials really talk about healing kids. Like it's not that common. You know, a lot of them are really focused on healing yourself, healing cancer. But so what? You know, I can, <laughs> I can, I can be one of the first people to do it. Then you know, pull it off. But yeah, this this is definitely a heck of an experience. I definitely do recommend this. Um, if you're on the fence about going, definitely go. I. I want to go home and like really dive into this and really practice this and master a lot of this stuff. And then I'm almost certainly going to come back to another one of these things or do one of his uh, advanced retreats. So yes, uh, I'm very, very pleased with the, the advanced retreat. I, I highly recommend it. Um, I think it, it, you know, if you go home and you implement what you learn here, I think it can literally be life changing for a lot of people. All right, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys on the next video.